I'm going to give you the assaults of the enemy. Number one, accusation. This is how the enemy fights the believer. It's mindsets. Number one, accusation. Number two, temptation. Number three, distraction. Number four, depression. Number five, discouragement. If I'm going too fast, I'm going to repeat them again. Number one, accusation. Have you ever been going about your day just enjoying it, and suddenly, right on the mind, some thought that hits you of something you did in your past. What begins to happen inside of you? Shame. That is an assault of the enemy. Remember that when demons attack the believer, they always use their mouths. They talk, they speak. They tell you things that are not true. They tell you things that are contrary to the word of God. Accusation is one of them. There are, there's somebody in this room tonight. And I say this not by word of knowledge, but by any crowd this size, there's gonna be someone in this room tonight. You've been battling guilt over your past for a long time. And whatever you did or however you lived, haunts you to this day. And you've received Christ, you've been saved, you've been born again, you've heard every sermon on how your past is forgiven, yet somehow you don't believe that it applies to you. I'm here to tell you that you need deliverance tonight, not from a demonic being, though that's the one who's lying. You need to be delivered tonight from a mindset. It's time to stop carrying the weight of your past because when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't just die to take away the sin. He died to take away the shame. Right. Number two, temptation. And there, actually, each one of these I'm giving you is a whole sermon in itself. I blended like five or six sermons to try to get you as much tonight as possible. Number two is temptation. Demons are like salesmen for sin. <laughs> That's what they do. Look at this. While never getting you to think about the consequences, they cause you to think about the pleasure. And while you are pulled away, the Bible says, by your own desires, the scripture also talks about how demonic beings will tempt. In other words, they will literally speak to you. They can't go inside of you. They can't possess you. They can't grip your mind literally. But they can do like anyone can do and just stand in front of you and tell you things. They can speak to you. Your mind is like a big brick wall. They can throw things over the wall, but they themselves can't get in. Those are the thoughts they put in. And sometimes we need to pick up the thought and throw it right back over the wall. <laughs> Temptation... Temptation is not an event, it's a process. Why did you fall into sin on Friday? It's because you were scrolling through Instagram on Monday, not changing the channel when that commercial came on on Tuesday, looking too long at that billboard on Wednesday, thinking about it, allowing your mind to wander on Thursday. Friday comes along, you fall into sin, then what? It was your giving in to the temptation again and again that brought about sin. Number three, distraction. Keeping you from prayer and the important things. Keeping you focused on what is not the core of your nature. I'll give you the next few and then I'm gonna show you, show you the solution. Then there's depression, which is, as I said, depression is, a, is, is an interesting subject because it can be rooted in the flesh, agitated by the demonic. In the case of the non-believer, it can be rooted in the demonic and agitated by the flesh. But the believer has tendencies about them that can be agitated by demonic beings, including depression. Then there's discouragement. This is anxiety. Discourage doesn't mean to make you sad. Discourage means to take away your courage. Discourage. Now, what's the solution here? 2 Corinthians 10.5. Are you receiving this tonight, church? 
How many are, your eyes are being opened? Let me see your hand. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought of obedience to Christ. The mind is the battlefield. The thought is the attack. When the enemy attacks me in my mind, when he throws something at me to believe, the word of God is the means by which I pull that stronghold down. When the scripture tells you of your sword, it's Ephesians 6, what does it tell you your sword is? It's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. How do you fight these battles? It's the word. It's always been the word. Jesus cast out the demons with a word. It's the word. There's no special incantation. You can't fight incantation with incantation. There's no special prayer you have to spell out like it was a curse that needed to be broken by only a certain sequence of words. It simply is the power of the Holy Spirit working through the word. And the reality is this. Once you've been freed from a mindset, you're free indeed. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.